Okay, so for this video, I'm um, just going to kind of continue where I left off here. So um, uh, we're talking about reading coils. We kind of we talked about the payload uh, and uh, like the messages that are passed from, from one node to another. Um, and uh, so I think that's all, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm just going to talk about uh, some, some of the other operations that we're performing here. So if we look at this one, uh, let's just pay attention to this part here. Um, and uh, basically what we want to do is we want to write to uh, a Modbus device. So again, in this situation, we've got it connected to a server. Um, and that is, it's this server over here on the Modbus master. Um, that's what we're connected to. So uh, basically what we've done here, so we've got these inject nodes. Now uh, what we have to use to write is um, we have to use a join node. Now uh, what this join node does, we put it in manual mode um, and we um, make it create an array uh, uh, as its payload. So each payload, it says combine each payload um, into an array. And that's the payload that's coming into it. So here we're taking a, let's say it's a true value or a false value, whatever, let's say it's true. And uh, so um, if we click this one time, that's one payload. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this eight times. This is gonna join it into an array after it'll send, and then it'll send the message after eight, after it receives eight payloads essentially. Uh, so that's how it's configured and uh, it's going to send uh, that array of eight uh, values into this function. Now, again, uh, you can just, if uh, to figure out the format, basically, you just need to go to the node information for this flex, right? And then you can basically look at this here. And that's, that's going to be your format uh, for the flex, right node and what it needs to accept. Um, so we've configured that. <clears throat> that's all fine. I set the topic to write just to make it a little more clear. Um, and uh, basically, we can test this out here. So um, if I go hit this button eight times. Now, you can see that uh, this debug node has outputted. We just put uh, eight true values into this. Uh, Modbus server or Modbus device. Now what we can do is uh, we can read from this and we can see are they are they in here? Well uh, I've got this read function over here which is basically it's the same as what's here that I was showing you before um, and what we'll do is we'll now read from the server and we see that it's all true. Now if we want to write to the server let's say we make it uh, staggered zeros and ones here. So now we've got false, true, false, true, false, true. If we go back here and we read, we see that it's false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. So pretty simple. Um, uh, you just have to configure the node uh, to the server that you want to read or write to or to the uh, Modbus device you want to read or write to. Um, ignore this part for now down here. This is just basically what this does. Um, it, it, it's just, um, it's reading from the SCADA pack or server, and then it's taking what it reads, performing a bit of logic on it, flipping the bits uh, from zeros to ones or ones to zeros, and then writing it to it. So essentially what it's doing is it's toggling the bits in the SCADA pack. And we can get to that later. Um, but uh, anyway, that's how you write to a device. So very simple, same kind of thing as, as here. You just got to configure it. You got to, you know, configure your function in, in, into the format that it accepts. Um, and then, so over here, now uh, we're reading or writing floats. Uh, so essentially, this is the exact same thing. I'm not even going to, uh, I'm not even going to hook it up to the server and show you because it's identical. Um Basically, we've just configured it now with the correct function code and stuff for, for reading a float. We've got the address, you know, okay, we're going to read two. Um, and the reason we're reading two here is because uh, 
in the SCADA pack 334, floats are saved in two registers, two 16-bit registers. Um, and uh, so, so we have to read two. Um, and then it reads them. And then the thing is, is it's going to output this Modbus, Modbus Flex Getter. It's going to output uh, basically unsigned, 16-bit unsigned integers. And it's going to output two of them. So what we do is we've got a bit of code. Uh, like I found some of this online. And then I uh, modified it a little bit. And, and uh, I don't think it's too important to get into it. But uh, basically it, it, it creates a buffer um, and uh, it, it basically stores it, it converts it. Um, it stores that uh, 16 unsigned integer of 16 bits and, uh, and then basically uh, it converts it uh, to like a readable float. So, so that's all fine and dandy. Uh, now it'll convert it and then it'll output it here. So that way you can just read it, right? Or like, I mean, a person can read it very easily. You're not having to convert it from an unsigned integer or anything like that. And also you gotta remember that there's there's two, it's reading it's reading two registers, two un, two 16-bit unsigned integers. So this is essentially, it com, it's combining them and it's outputting a 32-bit float, essentially, uh, I guess, or a, a readable float, right? So. Um, that's easy enough. And then we go to our right floats. Now it's basically the exact same thing, uh, except now we need to take uh, this, which is in, uh, basically what we're doing here is we're injecting a float, right? And, and, and so you can even inject a negative 62 point whatever. Um, you can include the negative sign or not, uh, and it works. And uh, so essentially this is just injecting this value uh, nothing's going to come up here because this isn't connected. Now it's just injecting this value because uh, we've got a payload. It's a number um, versus before um, we were also writing a number, but we were just writing a Boolean true or false here. That was the payload for these inject nodes um, or a false here. Um, so, and then this again, empty string because we're just reading. So this one here is the is the proper float. And uh, this basically takes that. Uh, it uh, it essentially converts this floating point number and and converts it into an unsigned 16-bit array. Um, and uh, and then see uh, you know at the end of every like function or or whatever, this is where you re you return the message, right? So this is where the message gets sent out of here and into here. So what happens is that uh, now unsigned, there's actually gonna be two unsigned integers. So this is actually an array of unsigned integer. This is the first array, this is the second array. Um, so it's gonna send those two values out to this function. That's that return message. So it sends it here. <clears throat> and then this uh, is now going to uh, write to two registers. And uh, we've got the correct function code and all that which you can, again, view by looking at node information. Um, and so, and yeah, so that's, that's, about, that's about all for that, I think. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, you have to, you have to con do a little bit of conversion, which is pretty easy. Like I found most of this online. I, I had to do a, like a little bit of research there because <clears throat> the one that I found online, uh, this U wasn't here. Um, so it was actually converting it into a, a signed integer. Um, so I had to change that. I turned it into an unsigned integer. But, you know, I basically found it online. I didn't really do a whole lot of uh, writing for that. Um, and same with this one over here. <clears throat> I also kind of found this online. But again, I, I changed this to unsigned. Um, and, uh, you know, another thing to note is the SCADA pack 334 is the byte order. I think I had to, I had to change that as well. Yeah. So here I did this, uh, I found this function online. Uh, this uh, basically is a reverse function. So it takes the payload. And then uh, remember how I was talking about uh, objects being kind of like a container. So inside the message object here, we've got a payload. And then inside, basically what we're doing is uh, objects also have functions. And so we're performing uh, a uh, reverse function on the payload. 
And uh, so because uh, the one that I found online here, it's it's basically storing it in an array, but it's in uh, the byte order is, um, I believe, little endian, whereas the SCADA pack 334 has a byte order of big endian. Um, so I just had to switch that around. And then that's the same in here, uh, I believe. <clears throat> Yeah, so up here, uh, I I reversed it uh, at the top there and then converted it. So um, pretty easy, I would say. Uh, pretty easy to understand. I think if anybody were to kind of sit down and just go through this a little bit and uh, actually hook it up and, uh, you know, test it, use the debug nodes and stuff, I, I think they'd get a pretty good idea of, of how this works. And it's, it's really not that complicated. Um, some of this other stuff that I've done, <clears throat> it gets a little bit complicated, but you know, not overly, um, like, you know, and some of it may not even be necessary. I've kind of done some things to kind of safeguard the program, um, just to ensure that, you know, nothing, no bugs are going to occur or, or whatever. Um, and, uh, but if we go back here to, to write coils, I'll just explain <clears throat> what this is doing here properly. So like I said, basically, uh, when I hit this, now these are these link nodes and, uh, they're right here. And, uh, these link nodes basically link different flows. Um, and you just configure it and, uh, basically tell it, you know, okay, so on the read coils flow, which is over here, um, it's connected to this trigger read to toggle node that I made. And uh, so we go back here and you see this is where it's connected to, or sorry, this one. And uh, so it even gives you a little thing here. It says it's connected to right coils. So essentially, instead of hitting this inject, when I'm over here and I hit this, I'm essentially going to be hitting this inject here. And this will inject the um, null string or a uh, empty string in and then it's going to read then it's going to send it down here and if you notice there's this link and this also goes to right coils and that's right here <clears throat> and basically so when i hit this both of these are getting sent over to read coils except this bottom one is is basically notifying uh this function that i made if it's it's notifying it if right coils was pressed then uh, we're performing a write operation uh, so that if you press this one here, it's not going to think that we're writing. We're just reading, uh, if that makes sense. So um, basically, again, this will trigger the read coils and this will notify it. And now it'll notify that this button has been pressed and not this button. So that notify is going to come in here. There's a delay uh, and the delay is just to make sure that that this or this sorry was pressed before this i.e this needs to be pressed before this and that's because we got to read the coils uh and then we want to basically write the coils um so uh essentially I, I guess i'll get into this in more detail uh in the next video but um Essentially, this, these nodes here are just kind of splitting. This splits the, the message that's coming out here. And it splits the payload uh, values into separate messages. So it creates multiple messages. And uh, the reason I did this is because it's going to split what's coming in here. And it's going to split what's coming in here. And what's coming in here is a blank string from here. This blank string. Now, the reason that I did that is because it splits them all and then it combines them all because uh, it's just kind of the way that it's the way if you put a couple debug nodes here and notice how they come out, it was easier uh, to split them by payload because it kind of ignores the extraneous information and creates separate messages by payload, uh, including this one. And then basically uh, it combines them all back in to one payload, except now they have different, they've been combined by payload. So they have different uh, uh, values. So, so it'll have a payload of this, a null string, and then it'll have a payload of whatever was in here. And uh, it goes down to this function, this read or read slash write. 
And basically what this does is it says, well, if this button was pressed the on right coils, it basically says, then we need to actually write. But if, if that button was not pressed, then that means that somebody just wants to read and all they've done is hit this. And in that case, don't do anything. Return null. So I'll explain this uh, better on the next video, but uh, I just wanted to give you an idea here and uh, just kind of show you how to write, uh, read floats and write floats, which I think is all pretty straightforward. All right, thanks for listening.